It seems that every Linux YouTuber has to have a Windows 11 reaction video. Some of them are taking it seriously and actually looking at Windows 11. Some of them are taking the piss and making fun of Windows 11. I figured what I would go through and do, because it seems that, like I said, every Linux YouTuber has to have one, is I would talk about five reasons why Windows 11 sucks and why Linux is better. So uh, I'm doing this because obviously clickbait is the best way to use YouTube. It just seems to be the best. So here are five reasons why Windows 11 sucks and why Linux is better. So first of all, these aren't in any particular order. They're all equally true. So the first one is that on Linux, there's no telemetry. Now, this isn't technically true because Canonical does ask if they can collect information, but it's opt-in. So in other words, by default, there's no telemetry. And that's pretty much the same across the board for every single Linux distro that I've ever used. Uh, the only real telemetry you'll ever see is always going to be opt-in. That means that it's off by default. And that's not the case with Windows. Windows is opt out by default, and there are certain points of their telemetry that you can't get rid of at all. You just kind of turn it down to the lowest setting or whatever, and they're still going to be sending at least some information back to Microsoft. And that's not a great thing, uh, especially things how, like I said, you can't turn it off. That's why Windows 11 sucks. Windows 10 sucks, too, uh, in that regard. Uh, anyways, number four. Uh, you can customize it without logging in. So one of the things about Windows 11 is that if you want to change things, you have to have a Microsoft account. And specifically, they've made a change where they've moved the, t the start menu and the, like, the task switcher to the center. To It kind of looks like Mac. I mean, an ugly version of Mac, but kind of like Mac. Uh, and if you want to change that back to moving it to where it was on the left-hand side, you actually have to have a Microsoft account, which not only means you have to have Microsoft account and give them information, but it also means you have to have internet access because you have to have internet access in order to actually sign up for a Microsoft account. So if you don't have internet access, say you live out in the boondocks, or you live in a country that doesn't have great internet access, you're kind of screwed. It means if you've managed to install w Windows at all, which we'll talk about here in a minute, that means you're stuck with your start menu and task bar, task bar in the center of the screen. You can't change it. I also believe that's the same for changing the wallpaper and the theme. So that's not a great thing. So uh, now this isn't much different from Windows 10 because in Windows 10, you had to have an activated version of Windows. And you can't activate Windows, as far as I know, without a internet connection. Maybe you can call them. I don't know if that's still a thing. You used to be able to call like a 1-800 number and have an automated service activate your copy of Windows. Maybe that's still possible, but... I think, if I remember right, there's so many hoops you have to jump through to actually get to that number. Uh, they really want you to have the internet can, you know, to connect, to actually customize your machine. Again, you have to have a Microsoft account to make any customizations in Windows 11. And on, on Linux, that's not even a thing. That's not even, I mean, there's no distribution out there that requires you to sign in to a proprietary account in order to make customizations to your system. That's just not the thing. Now, there are certain desktop environments that are more anti-customization than others, that's for sure, looking at Uganome. But even then, because it's Linux, you can still bypass that and customize it as much as you want. Number three is it doesn't require an internet connection. So this is very much related. Uh, it's come out that if you use Microsoft Home, which is likely going to be the most predominant or widely sold version of Windows 11, you have to have an internet connection to even install it. And a Microsoft account, by the way. You can't... Those things are connected. You can't install it without a Microsoft account and without connecting to the internet. That is going to be a huge pain point for a lot of people in the world who just don't have either good internet or any internet at all. That's... This just That doesn't look good for Microsoft because uh, they have a billion devices or close to two billion people using Windows and... Some of those people are definitely not going to have access to the internet, so that means they're going to be stuck on older versions of Microsoft you know, Windows, uh, and that means their operating system is going to be much more insecure than what it would normally be. Now, it's probably not going to be that big of a problem because most of those people probably would never up upgrade anyways and maybe don't even care about upgrading, but 
it still feels like a unnecessary limitation. And it's definitely not something you'll see on Linux. Number two is that you're going to get this update whether you like it or not, if you have the internet. Because this thing is going to be pushed to you eventually as a update to Windows 10. Now, that won't happen immediately. And it'll probably be a, a couple years down the line. But they're going to be forcing this on as many people as possible because this is where they want to focus their development efforts. They're going to stop supporting Windows 10 eventually, whether it's in 2025 or further on beyond that, whenever. Eventually, Windows 10 is going to be going the way of Windows XP and Windows 7 and Windows Vista and Windows 8. So that means they're going to be pushing people onto this new version of Windows, and that limits your choice. Windows has always limited your choice, especially compared to Linux. Whatever you have on your computer, that's what you have. Now, they have gotten a little bit better in, you know, in terms of customizing in the last few versions, but... Again, you can only do that if you logged into a Microsoft account or have a, a certain version of Windows. That's not great choice. On Linux, choice is the name of the game. Don't like the distro you're on? Change the distro. You don't like the desktop environment you're using? Install a different one. You don't like the software you're using? Find some other option because there are tons of different options out there of everything. Um, so if, if you don't like it, find some way to do it. And because it's open source, chances are you'll have a much better uh, opportunity to interact with developers of programs and distributions and desktop environments. And if there's something you want, there's possibility you could you know put that forth and it actually might happen. It might be something that they could implement. Chances are if you come up with an idea and send it to Microsoft, they're just going to ignore you. So uh, there's no choice in Windows. All the choices is in Linux. And the number one reason for why Windows 11 sucks is because they can't seem to understand that people want to use their computers for longer than four years. And what I'm talking about is that Windows 11 will only work on certain CPUs uh, bought in the last three or four years. Intel Generation 8 and the Ryzen 2, 3, 2, 3, and 4. Or 2, 3, and 5, I guess, is because they skipped one. And that means anybody who's using a 7th or 6th generation Core i, whatever, and a, a generation 1 of the Ryzen CPUs, you can't update. Those computers aren't old. I mean, many of those are fairly new, and several of them you can actually still go out and buy right now. So that means any of those people who just bought those kinds of computers or bought used computers based on those processor architectures can upgrade to Windows 11. Now, they may change this, but as of right now, that's the truth. On Linux, if you have a 10-year-old computer, you can install Linux on it. Now, obviously, uh, you might face some performance limitations, so you might want to try a distribution that is uh, pointed towards more low-end hardware, but it's possible. You could run anything. If a Raspberry Pi can run Linux, which is you know a, a very small, very underpowered you know, single-board computer... Uh, a computer from 10 years ago has no problems running Linux. It just doesn't. And that's awesome. I mean, you can probably game on a computer 10 years, you know, a 10 years old on Linux. Now, obviously not AAA games, but, you know, whatever. It's definitely a possible. And because you have that freedom of flexibility of being able to install Linux on whatever hardware you have, I mean, that means you can keep your hardware for much, much longer as long as it works. And that means you can go through and upgrade your hardware if it's possible. And that means you can keep it for even longer. That means there's less e-waste. It means you save money. It's win-win. And Microsoft doesn't seem to care about that. Now, they're going to argue it's because of security. It's not because of security, okay? It has nothing to do with security. Now, the TPM chip or whatever came out in 2017... So that means any processor before, you know, after that should be perfectly fine. Uh, but the cutoff for the processors is actually after that. So they have even further security parameters that they're looking for in terms of what's on the processor architecture. And nobody actually really knows what those are. They've come out and said some things, but they don't make sense. It, it's just really weird. So uh, you can install Linux on whatever you want. It won't be possible with Windows 11. So... Linux is better. 
Now, obviously, I should say this. I should have said this up front, but I am completely biased. Uh, I hate Windows. I've always hated Windows. Even when I was a Windows user, I didn't like Windows. Uh, the forced updates that you had to go through, the forced restarts just to install programs, which is dumb. All those things have eternally turned my mind against Windows. So I was always going to be against Windows 11. So I am biased. I will admit that. Uh, I love Linux. Linux is the in the name of the channel. I've used Linux full time since 2017. I don't foresee a future where I will ever go away from using Linux unless Linux stops being developed or something else major happens. And I don't see that happening either. Happening either. So I am biased. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts are on Windows 11. I have a feeling I know what my audience is going to say about Windows 11, but if you just have come across this video and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do so. Leave a like, a thumbs up, and uh, hit the notification bell icon, all that stuff. You can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank our current patrons, Devon, Marcus, Meglin, Donnie, Sven, East Coast Web, Mitchell, Merrick, Camp, and Chris. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time. Also... Before I go, I don't know what's going on with the camera, why it's shifting colors again. I don't know. I need a new camera. So that's the next thing that I'll be upgrading, I guess. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Stupid camera.